coming up on Small Town Big Deal. It's the Woodstock of Woolly Bears. How one town's love affair with this furry little caterpillar turned into Ohio's biggest festival. We love it. And find out how this young farmer spun bailing hay into YouTube gold. I'm like, this is crazy, especially for me, who was like a little nobody. Welcome to Small Town Big Deal. I'm Rodney Miller. And I'm Jan Carl. You know, there are many ways to predict the weather. A barometer. A uh, farmer's almanac. A wind sock. Weather vane. Yeah. Uh, and in Pennsylvania, they have Punxsutawney Phil, a groundhog who will tell you how soon spring is coming. Well, that's great, but I'd kind of like to know when winter's coming and how tough it's going to be. Oh, well, Rodney, you are in the perfect place today. For nearly half a century, on the third Sunday in September, the tiny hamlet of Vermilion, Ohio, about 40 miles west of Cleveland, is transformed. Vermilion goes from being a quaint small town of 10,000 into the Woodstock of woolly bears, those furry little caterpillars with the orange band in their center that, according to legend, have an uncanny ability to predict what kind of winter is coming. How accurate is the woolly bear? Oh, it never misses. Never, never misses. misses. And the woolly bear is in charge. And I would reckon that the heaviest weather... The weather pattern beginning Sunday. Legendary night. Cleveland TV weatherman Dick Goddard is the driving force behind the Woolly Bear Festival. He founded the event back in 1973. How does the woolly bear tell us about the upcoming winter? <laughs> Well, according to legend, it is the uh, center of the woolly bear. If it's really a long area, it gives you a relatively mild winter. So the, if the orangish, brownish part is long, that's a mild winter? Yeah, that's and mild. If, if there's more black than orangish brown, that means yeah, oh. cold. <laughs> Got it. The predictive powers of woolly bears were first studied beginning in 1948 by a team from the American Museum of Natural History. And though their findings were not conclusive, a legend was born. Go! The festival has become the largest one-day event in Ohio, drawing crowds upwards of 100,000 people. How would you describe this festival to somebody who's never been here before? Small town craziness. But we love it. Vermilion pulls out all the stops with a parade that includes a larger than life woolly bear mascot that lasts well over two hours. Look at that woolly bear on that golf cart. Okay, that's awesome. And there's no shortage of woolly bear events. Welcome to the 46th annual woolly bear greatest kids race. From the teeniest little speed racers, all with their own unique style, <laughs> to the toddler division. It's all about crossing the finish line. Great job! What kind of training? Lots of donuts in the morning. He's been through some rigorous training for this. He's trained his whole life, basically. I'm from Missouri. Yeah. So Mighty Mo, maybe I Perfect. can race Mighty, Mighty, Mighty Mo. Mo. Race in red. Vermilion's Chamber of Commerce Executive Director Sandy Cole makes sure everyone gets involved. Then we have the uh, Wooly Bear costume contest for little kids for King and Queen. How are you doing, buddy? Good. It's a lot of fun. A lot of cute, cute kids out there dressing up in their Wooly Bear costumes. Very creative. Baby is a diva. Baby is a diva. So you take Wooly Bears and then little kids and babies dressed up like Wooly Bears and the cuteness factor just skyrockets. Oh, Sugar Bear. Oh, look at that. 
and then after that is the Wooly Bear Pets costume contest. And you will see rabbits, cats, dogs. You will see all sorts of animals over there. We go from the teeniest little dog to the biggest dog. You should have brought your cow. Oh, <gasps> perfect, perfect. <laughs> but the big dog of events is racing in the Wooly Bear 500. So are you going to race the baby? Mm-hmm. He's really fast, so I named him Zoom. When we return, ladies and gentlemen, start your caterpillars. Go Mo, go Mo, go Mo. We are living the dream, racing in the Wooly Bear 500. Ready for this week's small town big deal quiz? What other name does the woolly bear caterpillar go by? Is it woolly worm, hedgehog caterpillar, or fuzzy bear caterpillar? The answer next when we come back. Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal from the Wooly Bear Festival in Vermilion, Ohio. Here's the answer to the quiz. What other name does the Wooly Bear Caterpillar go by? Wooly Worm, Hedgehog Caterpillar, or Fuzzy Bear Caterpillar? If you chose any of them, you are correct. You can accurately call the Wooly Bear any of those names, but as my daddy used to say, just don't call any of them late for dinner. So just to recap, we are at a giant festival that celebrates a caterpillar that predicts the weather. Now, we've covered a lot of different stories in small towns. <laughs> Hollering contest, a 1,700-pound meatball, sheep taking over Main Street, and even a rolling in the grits contest. This one goes down as another unique favorite. Do we have the best jobs in television or what? Well, two others who'd make the same claim are the team of Big Chuck and Little John. <laughs> They've been the MCs of the Wooly Bear Festival since it began in 1973 and have been fixtures on local TV in Cleveland for even longer. Everybody has a smile on their face. They're laughing, they're with their friends and everything. You don't see anybody pushing and shoving and everything. And, it, and there's a lot of people here. There'll be 100,000 people. And it, everybody's out for a good time. And I love that you're still enthusiastic about the race, man. You guys are still like in having there. Having fun. Having fun, cheering on the kids. But you gotta understand, we get excited watching paint dry. <laughs> <laughs> Ready, go. And, and there was no shortage of excitement during all the qualifying heats for the Wooly Bear 500. Competition was fierce. What is the name of your woolly bear? Mr. Wooly. Now yours is really small. The younger it is, it probably the more energetic it might be. That's a pretty good strategy. How you been taking care of it? Well, I've been giving him some water, and I also been taking them outside. Oh, look at it. The small town big deal. Television people are getting in this race. So, you know, we couldn't resist. And when it comes time for our heat, the pressure is on. Ready, go! Okay, I'm not sure who won between Jan and I, but we both did terrible. Is there a prize for going back over the start line? I think Rodney came in last. I think I'm gonna change his name to Slowpoke. I'm sorry, was I smiling during that one? But before we get to the race finals, are you ready for a few fun facts about the Wooly Bear? Now the Wooly Bear's scientific name is Paraksha Isabella. That's very impressive, Jan. Thanks, Rodney, but I did just look it up. Well, I thought so. But did you know that woolly bears can survive in temperatures as low as 75 below zero? Yes, that's because they've got their own built-in antifreeze that kicks in when they hibernate. And when their time is up as a caterpillar, which can actually be as long as an astounding 14 years, they transform into what's called an Isabella tiger moth. Well, we should be winging our way back to the final race of the eagerly anticipated Wooly Bear 500. It's down to two local young competitors. So it's an all-vermilion finals. 
Everybody ready? You could really feel the excitement in the air build when it came time for the final races. Go! And there they oh, go in right. the final. Oh, oh boy. Oh, oh, it's a tight race. race. It looks like a Girl Scout is going to be the winner. It's Girl Scout, the winner. The winner. Yeah, Girl Scout, let's hear it. The pride of Vermilion, Girl Scout, trained by Vivian Rivera. Woolly Bear Champion! Tell us about where you found your woolly worm. Our dad found it in the yard by the picnic table. During the race, were you nervous? I was excited. You had fun? Yes. Yeah. And will Girl Scout race again, or will she be retiring? Or do you not want to release her? <laughs> Me and my sister don't want a little go, but we have to. <laughs> That's an honest answer. Right? I know. She's already become part of the family. She probably has to go and be with her other woolly bear friends, huh? Uh oh, I didn't mean to bring up a bad subject. <laughs> yep. You opened up a real can of worms there, Jan. I did, but Vivian, there'll be another woolly bear for next year's race. We promise. When we come back, we go behind the scenes to see how everyday chores made this farmer famous. Okay, quick lesson on tagging calves. Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal. You know, Jam, when we started this show, we wanted to share our love of small town America through video. And we have found a farmer who is definitely a kindred spirit, <laughs> That's for sure. except he wants to share the beauty of farming in the 21st century. Yeah, but he never thought it would be this big a deal. This is Kister Farms, a 1,200-acre family operation near the small town of Potosi, Wisconsin. That's about 170 miles west of Milwaukee. If you don't live around here, you may have never heard of Potosi, but a lot of people have heard of Kister Farms. It's the home of Ryan Kister, the creator and star of the most popular ag-related YouTube show in the country. Hey everybody, it's Ryan. Welcome back to How Farms Work. We've got some hungry calves out in the barn. That is not looking good at all. Today, we are raking and bailing. I like my cattle. Sorry. Even the one that acted like she was wanting to kill me. I opened my first YouTube channel account in 2008 under the name Ryan Fun One. Well, Ryan Fun One was fun <laughs> for people to watch. Yeah. I'll take you down through there just so you can kind of see what's going on. What I did was I just came to the farm and filmed a couple short clips, uploaded it to YouTube, and then 2012 came around. I logged back in. I'm like, whoa, these videos have 14,000 views each. I'm like, this is crazy. OK, quick lesson on tagging calves. And I'm like, what could I do to try to promote agriculture? So I came up with the name How Farms Work. We got the Rhino 4155 on the back of the 7600. And today, Jamie and I are going to be hauling out manure. Ryan has a college degree in agribusiness, but his approach to farm video is super simple. He just takes his camera along each day as he works on the farm. You're a very special cat. His genuineness shines through. And he basically shows everything, raking hay, harvesting corn in the snow, or bottle feeding an abandoned calf named Fritzy. Look how fast it's going down. It's not going to be slow. She's like me. She's a fast eater. <laughs> YouTube viewers must like baby calves as much as Jan does. Do you ever get over how cute they are? Oh, no. Listen, listen, listen. How Farms Work has more than 50 million views so far. Ryan has become so famous that he gets invited to the nation's largest farm shows just to sign autographs. What do you think it is that people are so fascinated with? I've actually pondered about this quite a bit myself, and people always tell me it's just because farming is such a hard area to get into, not everybody can do it. So a lot of people like to farm through us, as we like to say. But oddly enough, Ryan has found out that over 70% of his viewers actually do have at least some farm background. Maybe they watch to see all the latest 21st century farming technology. So, uh, this tractor is equipped with the Green Star 3 display. Whoa, wait, what is Green Star 3? It's John Deere's. Wait, is that air conditioning? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. You can get how many gallons you're burning per hour. You can get GPS position. Can you, like, order fast food and have it delivered to you? Uh, no. I wish. <laughs> What has been the most popular video you've ever posted? Our most popular video to date was my rewind video. And you won't sell the farm. Essentially what my rewind videos are is they're a recap of the last year or two on the farm. Highlights. Yeah, highlights. And it's done really well. That video has over a million views now. He's coming. 
Okay, Jan, come on. Unlike Rodney, I didn't grow up on a farm. You think I can do it? Oh, yeah. But my dad worked for John Deere tractors for more than 30 years. I'll drive it a little bit, and then we'll switch. Okay. So, in honor of my father, Rodney was determined to teach me to drive Ryan's 4020. Ah. It would have been in your dad's area. He probably sold a million of these. So, you ready to try it? Okay. Yeah, now push your clutch in. You scared me. Well, you were going to grind the gears. Now pull it back to the first notch. Now you're in third gear. I'm in third gear. Yes. Yeah, that's good. Now take your foot completely off the brakes. Yeah. yeah. That's what my dad would do. He'd sort of kind of hit it yeah. like that. Oh, it has power steering. Fancy. And I don't want to run over any crops or anything. Oh, you all. Boy, this is beautiful. I wish my corn looked that good. <laughs> So after we're finished teaching Jan, now Ryan's going to let me do some real work with a 14-wheel rake with that 4640. What's it like being here and you have that many views? I mean, do they treat you like a celebrity or...? In this area? Yeah. Not really. Everybody that I know are like, why do they want to see Ryan? Like, it's just <laughs> Ryan. That Is that two media stars doing a little farming out there or two farmers doing a little bit of media? Hard to say. You have views from all over the world, right? Yep, all over. What are some of the biggest countries outside of the United States? Uh, like Britain and France, Spain, Mexico, Canada. But I also have views from other unique places like North Korea and <laughs> Iran. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan is the founder of How Farms Work, and he's the host. That's right, but you know what? He says, really, there's somebody else who's the star of the show. <laughs> somebody named Rocket. Rocket is Ryan's constant companion, and occasionally, just for fun, Come on, Rocket, let's go. Ryan straps on the Rocket Cam and lets his viewers have a dog's eye view of the farm. After a little more time with Rocket, it was time for the highlight of the day. <laughs> Absolutely, if Ryan gets to be on our show, we get to be on Good. his. Hey everybody, it's Ryan Kister from How Farms Work. Today I'm hosting Small Town Big Deal with Rodney and Jan. Hi! Hey everybody! Okay, this is pretty cool. I feel like I'm with uh, farming royalty. Oh yeah. <laughs> We're with the YouTube king of farming. I feel so honored for you to say that. <laughs> well, after spending a day on the farm with Ryan and Rocket, I think I'm beginning to understand why his videos are so popular. He is incredibly authentic and sincere. And after driving a 4020 and feeding the cutest <laughs> calf you ever saw, you can mark me down to help Ryan and How Farms Work reach 51 million views and more. So we will see you next time, guys. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Small Town Big Deal. And my hat is really off to Ryan and all he's doing to educate Americans on not only what it's like to live on a farm, but what it's like to work on a farm. Right, but I'm just kind of mad at you. Why is that? Because I wanted you to either negotiate the 4020 John Deere for me or the beautiful little calf. I'd had a better chance of getting the calf. I think you're really happy. <laughs> and, you know, just when we think we've seen it all on this show, we find a festival that celebrates a caterpillar that predicts the severity of winter. And they raced them. You know, you gotta love America. <laughs> I'm Rodney Miller. And I'm Jan Carl. Join us again next week when once again we celebrate the great stories from across America. Got the camera. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, they're up here, first of all, okay? <laughs> Just they're not up there on a cow. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Oh, that feels good. Kind of an expensive fan, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, I'm so strong that after fighting me, the calves have to go to sleep. It's really tiring. So you're like Captain Kirk, right? <laughs> you're like... That's what it feels like. This does feel like the captain. You're in the helm. Isn't that what they called it? Yep. Yes. Okay, Ryan's in the helm, and he yep. can control everything. So I want to know what kind of mascara you use, right? Because your lashes look fabulous. Would you please share your secret? 